we we use imaginative projection to envision alternative potential futures, right? And we seem to concentrate on the ones that are relatively statistically likely. Like when you're, I've, I've been thinking a lot about how consciousness operates. And, you know, you can think of us as deterministic creatures who are driven by mechanical algorithms to move forward robotically lockstep as we're driven by material causality. But um, you can also think about us as uh, imaginative visionaries who flesh out realms of possibility and then implement processes to bring those about. And I think the latter conceptualization is much more accurate with regards to the contents of our consciousness because what consciousness focuses on isn't constants. Consciousness focuses on variability. So, for example, if something unexpected happened in your sensory field right at the moment, you would orient towards it and you'd do that well, for implicitly, but your consciousness would focus on the, the uncertainty and the variability. And so we seem to use consciousness to shape variability. And so I guess the first thing I'm wondering is, is it reasonable to suppose that the purpose of the imagination is to map out that dimensional, multidimensional space with regards to its most likely configurations? And the second question is, this is a more oblique question, is that like, is it reasonable to assume that the possibility that consciousness appears to be contending to, like the field of possibility that opens up to your imagination, let's say, when you wake up in the morning and start to apprehend the possibilities of the day, is that a manifestation of the, what, it's, is that a manifestation of that, is it a higher level manifestation of that field of possibility that characterizes the the micro realm, you know, you know what I mean? There's possibility at the quantum level. Does that possibility make itself manifest all the way up to, to the, to the level of macro experience? Because we seem to be dealing with something like possibility rather than deterministic algorithmic actuality. And so there definitely is a, a rhyming between the two kinds of ideas for sure. But how is it that quantum physics at that rock bottom story bubbles up and influences conscious experience. I don't know, and nobody does. It's too complex a problem right now. But what I would say is there are things about consciousness that the rock bottom story does give insight into. And one of the big ones is free will, right? I mean, there have been arguments about free will going on for thousands of years. And to me, it's quite clear that when you recognize, if you believe that the physical is all that there is, and I don't know that that is the case, but let's just take that as an assumption for the moment, that there's no consciousness field that's out there in the world that we somehow are tapping into, that there's no greater power that's somehow beyond the laws of physics. If all we are are bags of particles governed by physical law and our brains are nothing but gloppy three pound collections of particles, that are organized sufficiently to somehow yield the information processing that we call conscious awareness, if that's all that it is, and I think that is all that it is, then there's no opportunity for us to have any freedom of the will because our particles are going to do what they're going to do, governed by the quantum laws, and there's no opportunity for an I to intercede in that lawful, if probabilistic, projection. So that's just the way things work. And so the view that we can somehow cause our particles perhaps to hold still for a moment, wait, wait for Brian to make a decision. And once Brian makes a decision, then carry on with whatever motion that you were going to do by the laws of physics, that's incoherent. That's ludicrous. And so however much we may feel that we are the ultimate authors of our actions, I don't see any opportunity for that because we can't intercede in the lawful progression of the particles that govern whether I move my arm, whether I say this or I say that. It's all just the motion of particles that are instantiated in my biological form. Do you feel that, What what's your opinion about, okay. You can make causally determinant arguments very far, very high up the resolution uh, what, what spectrum? So 
the more the more macro the system, the more deterministic processes seem to be at play. But when you push all the way down to the micro level, you have this fundamental indeterminacy. And so why would you presume that the deterministic argument holds true given that at its most fundamental basis, there's indeterminacy? You know, isn't it the case that if you wanted to make an algorithmic case that you'd need like predictable algorithmic causality all the way from the most micro levels all the way up? Or are you making the case that once you get to the macro level, the determinacy takes over to the point where there is no possibility for such a thing as free will? No, I think that the indeterminacy of quantum physics turns out to be irrelevant to the particular story that I'm telling in the following sense. So what, what I'm, I'm not saying that we are determinate in the sense that I can't predict what you're going to do next because you are ultimately a quantum system. Let me look re- right down at the level of your particles. Imagine I could zoom in on you and see your individual particles. The best I can do is predict the likelihood or the probability that those particles are going to evolve from one configuration to another through time. But that probabilistic prediction, that uncertainty, that's not freedom of your will. You aren't controlling which outcome happens. You aren't determining which outcome is more likely or less likely. You still are just going along for this probabilistic ride. And so whether physics is probabilistic, as quantum mechanics says, or in the classical determinant view that Isaac Newton would have said, we know it's the former, not the latter, but even in the former, you aren't controlling that uncertainty, and therefore you aren't controlling how things are unfolding. You aren't controlling what you do or what you say at that fundamental level. So you are nothing but this collection of particles still fully governed by laws, which I should say, the quantum laws as mathematical equations, they are as deterministic as the classical laws, but what they determine are likelihoods, probabilities. And so once those probabilities are determined by mathematics, you are out of the equation. And that's the way in which you don't have the freedom of will that you feel that you do.